Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, we want to thank everybody that's supporting us over on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you guys. And this time, at this point in place in the changing of the yugas, as we are changing the yugas, and again, uh, we're going to go over what does that really mean? Uh, because what it, I think the most important thing about it is mankind's understanding of things changes. It does. Mankind's understanding of things change, but the ether changes a little bit too. And the ability for them to hold their technology together, that starts to dwindle. So that's where humans get, get a kind of peak and they start to understand what's going on because the technology is not holding up in the ether that we have now. And when we talk about the ether, we're talking about what some people look at as a fifth element. Yeah. The element that's there beyond the four common elements, earth, air, water, and fire. The element from which all the other elements come. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to share with you what we do a lot. And that's, you know, after meditation and mantras get into a comfortable position and then we ask kind of questions or I actually ask a lot of questions. Cindy gets into more of a partial trance-like state and shares what she sees, which again, it's her basically remote viewing, but mostly really coming from the guides. Uh, again, when we start asking these type of questions, of a more organizational standpoint, which is what we're looking at here. It's mostly going to be from the Galactic Federation, you know, that come in with this information. So as you're looking at this quote from David Icke, anyway, asking why we need humanoid robots when we have 8 billion people? Ah, to control the 8 billion or how many are left. Gotcha. Yes. Now, he says the world is administered by idiots controlled by psychopaths. Yeah, you know, idiots, I think that's giving them too much credit. I, I think really what they are is, you know, abject sellouts of humanity. They're, they're people that would sell their own grandma uh, you know, soul if, if it would get them ahead. That's really who the power structure is. And in reality, the power structure is nothing, but it's theater. And so... Without further ado, uh, we are going to give you this. We did this this afternoon after doing some chores. And so we will share with you um, what we were picking up mostly. Were, the question was, what's the power structure like at this moment in time? But we do uh, go off on little tangents. Because it keeps coming up for the politicians. It keeps coming up. So what we're doing is we're looking deeper into the power structure on the planet currently that's in place and at what level do the politicians get the understanding that they are under extraterrestrial control is it just certain nations or do all nations understand mm -hmm. so when i look to see the base level um, of our political structure when it comes to our sheriffs um, the lower level entities that are just pushing paper basically the sheriffs police officers even healthcare workers they have seen a lot of, of stuff that they cannot explain but they're not willing or able to step into that realm of realizing that it's extraterrestrials because of their conditioning and their education so you're not really going to see it there. You're not going to see it at this first level. They'll just think you're kind of wacky unless they have had a personal experience. And then still many of them, because of their conditioning and because of the way they were treated, they're still not going to go to that level of understanding and truly believing that there's extraterrestrials involved. Um, seems like when you get into... <clears throat> I guess governors, gov governors, uh, mayors have like this uh, intuition starts to kick in with them. Mm -hmm. 
because people's abilities are getting stronger, so they're able to sense into those that they work for and realize that it's just something is not quite right. Just something is not quite right. State representatives, um, even those those that uh, what are the ones that um, ask for money? Basically, they ask for money in the halls of of, of, of the White House. I forgot what they're called. But what do you mean, lobbyists? Lobbyists, yes. Lobbyists are starting to get an inkling that there's something wrong. So a lot of people that actually work in or have visited the White House are having intuition things, and they're starting to question uh, the higher higher ups and what is really going on because things are not making sense for them but they don't have any direct evidence so they don't make the the lines so when you get up to um <clears throat> maybe diplomats and uh pre- presidents that's when they're clear that there is an extraterrestrial force and they're barred from speaking about it but they are informed about it <clears throat> usually the first year of their presidency many of them are they know about it when they're running for office of the president there is just enough information out about it that they can't really deny it so that's that's where you start seeing that the control system is understanding that there's really not much they can do that there's a uh, there's something that has to be followed, a method that has to be followed, and they there's realizing they don't have a lot of power. So that's where that starts. I feel that it's in certain committees um, mm-hmm. that those committees get let in. So you'll have certain um, House representatives, certain senators, not all House representatives, not all senators, but certain ones that are brought into the fold and then understand openly that they're all just for show. Right. There's, there's, they have to keep up appearances. They're under that understanding. So there's like this threat, this constant threat. So they, they have to keep the narrative so that the people like us aren't having any suspicions. And if we do, you know, we're quickly quelled in some way, shape or form through punishment um, or <clears throat> being ridiculed in some way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. And um, as far as the particulars, at what level do they know exactly who this is, mm-hmm. who these beings are that are really running this show? At what level are they let in um, to the fact that you know they are uh, reptilian ultimately, or those that are being um, there are other extraterrestrial groups that are under reptilian control and dominance? So then you get out past the government because the government doesn't really have any control anyway. They're just like, um, they're, you know, they're the, they're what we see. They're what we see that pretend to be in control. You get into the Elon Musks that know, that know and have met or spoke with the, the alien overlords at some level the Bill Gates, they know, and they're getting information from the alien overlords and technology. Um, you, you see a lot of manipulation when it comes to those levels. I, I just can't think of anybody offhand besides Elon Musk and Bill Gates. They're two pretty big ones. Um, the Pope? I would definitely say the Pope is aware and probably is regularly visited by alien entities and along with um, somebody like George Soros is very aware of of these entities. So uh, now the church, I would say, from what I feel into the church, that's where most of the interactions are, are going. So even the Elon Musk, the Bill Gates, the royals, they seem to get everything from the Vatican so the Vatican feels like 
I think it's the highest level and closest communication with the alien power structure that we're going to find. And the power structure itself, if you could look into that power structure, we've had different names um, thrown out there from Anunnaki, which is a very big, broad label, GG, um, which, according to some texts, are below the Anunnaki, and in some texts, they're above the Anunnaki. There's so much distortion on every level. And if we've also heard of the Orion group, as well as obviously Draco and other reptilian beings, um, can you pick up on how the control structure really works on, on what group to what group to what group as far as the structure on Earth currently? That would probably take some writing down on a whiteboard to, to try to isolate the information but what I see is the Vatican anything uh, most reptilians most Draco most fallen Pleiadians are working together so they are all like one power system and they have a lot of help so just as many humans as there are on the planet you can say that there are jinn being controlled by them and there's uh, greys being controlled by them because that keeps a lot of the human population under control. And they also, I'm seeing in the halls of the Vatican, it's not abnormal to see a grey in the Vatican. It's like they, uh, the, the greys have the ability to exist here on earth and they have a lot of pull and they also have the ability to really torment certain humans who have great abilities to keep them from using their abilities. And sometimes those humans are able to break away from, from the trauma and they're able to become very useful psychics for other people. Um, it's like a big pool of power right now still at the top, at least for this year. And this pool trickles down into different veins of information and different veins of how things are to be um, spread out and how they're to be controlled. But the main pool, there's like a, a cesspool of controllers I see at the very top that are not, not of Earth. They don't even come to Earth. They're at the top. I, I, I keep seeing a pool of them. I don't know what that means, but it's a pool of them. And There's a collective? A collective. That's probably the word I was looking for. A collective at, at the very top. And they're going to be in control, I feel, for this uh, this 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 year um, in 2020, 2024, 2025. And they're also the ones who are we're dealing with in certain treaties with the United States as far as technologies go, um, controlling technologies. Now, we are recently learning about other technologies that help humans heal themselves because if you can be fully healed and you're not in a state of trauma or in a state of fear, then you can be productive for yourself. Then, then you're not part of the system you may utilize things out of the system but you're not part of the system you don't need the system so that's why i guess we're always saying for people to get self-sufficient because that's what takes their power away but back to this pool of entities um they're the ones who are the unseen characters that may very well that they're probably very difficult to even be heard spoken to probably spoken to through technology to um various other leaders other draco other reptilian um and then the, they take their orders down to the elon musks and the bill gates and a lot of information goes to the vatican and the vatican then spreads out to the government's the governments which are basically the face of the world now i would say that our our department of defense is very much in the know 
of these um, alien beings, but they're not directly, I don't see them directly talking with them, but they're definitely in the know. So when we get to the bigger families is when we get more communication with them. But we have seen um, human soldiers alongside um, extraterrestrials. That is, that's something I've seen on military bases. So I think they work with some military bases. Um, right now, they have been for maybe like the past few years getting used to one another. But I don't think it would, it's a super common thing. And it won't be a super common thing for quite some time. Um, but they are working together. I have seen them on that triangle. Um, I've seen them in uh, military bases. It's really, it's difficult because they know to put a, a blanket or they know to cover this information. So people like me can't readily see it. It's like I have to be in some type of more of a focused position to see them or deliberately looking. You know, sometimes when you look at things in this world, unless you know exactly what you're looking for, you're not going to see it because it's camouflaged. So there's a lot of that going on in the military. And is the Mar is Mars pretty similarly controlled, um, or is it completely? Um, well, I should probably back step and say Mars is occupied under the surface. That's what I see. I see um, beings underneath the surface. And, I mean, I do see humanoid-like beings. Um, as far as humans from this planet, I can't say for sure they're from this planet. I got to wonder if they weren't um, created on Mars so that they can deal with the Martian uh, energies. I think it's very difficult to take a human and just put them on Mars and have them survive. Um but I do see they can create humans on Mars who can adjust to the, the, the Martian the Martian field, energy field. Are they created in um, underground bases, or do you think they're brought there from ships and breeding programs and ships? There might be breeding programs. I mean, I could see that, but I, I think maybe those programs are probably on Mars surface because... What I see is a problem in getting people to adjust to the Martian land. They, it's better if they're born there. So I see that's the preferable way to create people on Mars is to create them right there. But I also see them bringing in certain ones off ships that might already be known to be compatible with the Martian energy. So I see that, and I don't see them. I don't see humans from this planet on Mars. How populated is Mars? That's that's a tough one for me. Um, I don't know. I just see people working underground in tubes. I see people working in uh, buildings that are blended with the ground. I think Mars was such a, like... A competitive warring type of place every facility that's there is like fortified really strong and there's a lot of technology when I look underneath these fortified types of structures there's a lot of technology that they do use and they do communicate with um, earth technology so that's really curious because I didn't see that before we have uh, beings on Mars working with our armies and our defense administrators to correlate the different types of wars. So when we see war on this planet, it's not coming from the mind. And I really think Israel could be the heartbeat of that, that could be the ones communicating with Mars, maybe that's the technology that I could see um, Israel has that nobody else has, because I've seen that Israel has a certain technology, I couldn't see it before, but I feel pretty good that it's, they are communicating from beings from Mars who have long lineages of war and understanding war and how to 
herd beings in such a way and manipulate people in such a way to get them to do what you want and win other wars as well. So I think it's the internal control and Mars is like a remote control to the Earth wars and until until we all just say stop, we don't want to do this, it's going to continue. We know um, Netanyahu uh, is controlled by as many Draco as we've seen on any one person. So he's obviously in the know of the situation. Now, I, I don't want to get in any trouble saying this, but as soon as Netanyahu is no longer useful, I don't know what's going to happen to him. I, I feel it's um, they if they don't have a need for him, he's probably going to dissolve into the world and he just won't even be mentioned or thought of. I don't see him going down as a great war hero. I see him being used, and then he's going to be dissolved into the into the, the background noise with him when he's no longer needed. But while he's needed, they have to control him to a very high degree, and that's exactly what they're doing. And that technology that Israel has, it has the ability to control weather and earthquakes. Oh, God, yeah. It, it has that ability to control all of those things. That's why everyone is, you know, Israel is getting away with a lot. But the problem is, is um, they're almost like a spoiled little toddler because there is an entity that does favor Israel. And, we, you know, we've talked about that. And if Israel is getting picked on, this entity is going to give them access to whatever technology they need to to make a point or to um, do something destructive or to take control. Um, it really feels like Israel has one up on everyone else on the planet because they're, they are favored in that way. Are humans given any leeway in the outcome of war or is it absolutely 100% completely scripted battle to battle? There's leeway. You, you have to look at it as destiny. So there's a scripted outcome, but the leeway comes in, in how to go about that outcome. And you have some really powerful professionals who understand the art of war working with some of our, you know, our top our, our top generals in executing executing these um, uh, commands. So it's it to them. It's it's they just supply what's needed to have the war. But it, it's up to how it's executed, and that's the leeway that we have. The that pool, that controller pool that you saw, are those lower fourth density beings? So I do see them as physical, but I don't see them as having the ability to be here on Earth, physical at this time. I do see them probably sometime in the future, and I can't tell you when, that they'll be able to step foot on this earth. Um, will they or won't they is the question. Will they, will they have another mission? Will they have another priority? Will they just not want to be part of earth? Will, will it be that earth people and humans have ascended to a point that they no longer have power because they're, they're, they truly are bullies to the highest degree, and if they don't have any power, they're not going to come here. Um, to me, that's that's where things are left in our hands to take away their power, so that's yet to be seen. Can you see where this group physically resides and what star system? I see them physically residing mostly on a very large ship. And it could very, I mean, the darkness that I see off of this ship could very well 
be what you know the one everyone talks about is Orion but that doesn't mean everybody from Orion is bad it just means um that's what I see right now so the ship is mostly what I'm able to see it's huge and these beings have everything they need on it um is it a certain shape it looks like a big a big old maybe a star wars type of ship it's I do see a lot of what looks to be metal, but I think this metal is able to be um, manipulated and moved. Like, I've seen some of this technology on Earth where the metal is able to be shaped in whatever they need it. So the technology itself has been redesigned on Earth, but the ship is something different. It's like... It's like they're making it their home. So I don't quite understand it. They basically reside on a ship. I don't see them from any one star system. But probably Orion is my guess. What's the status of this galactic war at this point in time in other locations? Is is it is there some sort of temporary truce where you're not having um, pitched battles that are actually literally destroying different planets, or is it still raging? In certain areas, I see it's having problems where the vibration is low, and this is why the Pleiadians are helping us raise our vibration, because if we can get enough vibration up there, then in these areas, there's not going to be a lot of war if people are in a high enough place because war cannot exist after a certain, after a, a certain um, energy shift. So I see it that the war itself is about keeping low frequencies. So they're trying to hold on to certain areas but a lot of these areas are coming up in vibration anyway. So they're now warring for the lower vibrational frequencies where they can keep control for, for, for a lot longer. So it's like, it's almost like it's um, all around the star system. Like there's dips and valleys and, and energy. And they just, they take these dips and they take these valleys and they control them. So that's that's what I'm seeing. So again, it's, it's because of the cycles of the yuga. Yeah, it's my heart. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that's what we got from that um, session looking in. Um, and to add a few things to that, Again, uh, yes, the beings on Mars directly seem to have control over the wars on Earth. You know, the when you look at the different Sumerian stories, um, depending on if you're looking from what particular area, you know, is it Arcadia, is it Sumeria, is it Babylon, what age, you know, the the names, the power structure does change. And, you know, as I was sharing the other day, I'm going through the Chaldean Genesis. And, you know, again, it, it doesn't speak in a monotheistic way. It talks about the various beings. It talks and mentions all sorts of different gods, quote unquote. Uh, again, they're all extraterrestrial when you get down to it. And yet there are some um, that are kind of symbolic uh, forces of nature and part of the original matrix as well. So it gets very, very hard uh, to discern for the average person without the ability to go in and to channel themselves or remote view for themselves. Uh, all that you can do is kind of transverse all the mythology and all the writings that we still have and try to discern, okay, what is 
real and what is again them trying to throw us down a rabbit hole that leads to nowhere or you know again go into a loop uh, and a loop of facts that are not really facts but you know many of them are seeded information and distortions that will keep us from ascertaining what is what is actually happening and what has happened in the past you know it is interesting to note that the legends about the Ijiji uh, rebelling and saying they didn't want to do all the physical work and so you have you know humans being utilized as a slave race when you recognize that the Ijiji were brought from Mars to Earth to be uh, basically the intermediary, so to speak, between the extraterrestrial power structure that's off planet with you know the illusion of the human government government and governance on planet, then you start to get a bigger uh, idea of the picture there and recognize that you know again these these EGG are are humanoid beings and in fact homo sapiens is is again a manufactured uh being from what was here which was a lot of refugees from all over uh the galaxy many different races of ets were were here interacting on earth in the other yugas mostly in a benevolent way in the higher y yugas and then as you went to the bronze age in an ever increasing um, manner of conflict because you had that Kali Yuga coming in and the dark lower vibrational energies which allowed the takeover of the planet by the power structure that was already in place on Mars and Nibiru. I mean, it, it really, the complexities run deep, and, and this is just basically an overview of what I'm allowed to see right now. I, I do feel that there'll be more information to to come into play. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of information left out of there, but trying to understand the hierarchy and where, at what level do humans and aliens really know each other exist? At, at what level? And then, you know, trickling on down from there or trickling on up from there, what happens? So that's something that I'm, I'm kind of curious about. And I, I definitely do want to focus in more to try to understand that. Because I think with understanding, that's going to help people if they, if they, and it, it's not an easy thing to come to to understand that there's other entities off planet that control things i mean people are so resistant to that because if they admit that or if they actually see if if they see it i mean it it could shatter their whole paradigm and then they have to go back and relearn everything and that's not something that people want to do that's traumatizing i mean they they spent a lot of time so many people spent a lot of time in their world learning and understanding the complexities of what already is right now and what if you realize everything everything you thought was was to be true is not I, I mean it's not something that can be responded to easily with your soul and it, it's something that I went through and it was very very difficult you know I had to unlearn everything I had to drop all of my all of my barriers I had to drop all of my walls I had to realize that if I wanted to know something I had to lay down my belief system and that was hard that was hard but but now that I have it's like I have more power I can see so much more you can see so much clearer one of the things they use as a veil in this world is trauma and you can see how they traumatize from childhood they, they educate and they traumatize from childhood and that's one heck of a good veil for, for them. So if we are on a healing path, I think that's what's going to allow us to help each other see and really have a deeper understanding of what's truly going on so that we can go in a direction that's helpful, advantageous, and of a better vibration than we're at now. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one thing I want to get a, 
across because there's so much channeled information coming out there how to discern you know as one of our family members was bringing up a, a different uh, channel of information and asking a lot of questions and sending recommendations of videos what do you you know and and oh have you ever considered this and looking at that um and any any channel that is going to say things like well your your governments of the world are right now you know your president or what have you you know again that whole concept that uh, a certain president of the U.S. made an agreement with Grays, even. That's kind of a joke, you know, because the reality is it, no president of the U.S. has had any power to to do anything outside of what the system tells them to do. So it, it it's a little bit of giving you a clue that there is an E.T. control and influence on the planet, but it's done in a distortion again, and this is what they do time and time again. So, I mean, if you if you had, let's look at it in the sense of, let's say right before Napoleon went uh, and attacked Russia, going back to the, that time period. If the Russian czar was to come into town to speak to Napoleon, you know, the real emperor of france he wouldn't go to a play and then go and talk to an actor representing napoleon in a play because what's the actor gonna do well the reality is you know whether we're looking at 45 46 whether we're looking at putin or xi um or going back into the past you know whether it's you know the roosevelts whether it's any of them they are all actors you know, this is why, I mean, you had Ronald Reagan, who was an actor, and then he was the president. We've seen 45, you know, he, he had his own show, and he made appearances on the WWE. They're all actors. This is all they are. This is why they can, again, throw multiple versions of 46 in as needed, or even 45. You know, again, they're all just actors. They're all here to sell you on the fact that humans are controlling the narrative. The only way humans can control the narrative is to step out of the narrative. So again, now they're, they're going to throw on us this WW3 scenario. To go into the scenario and to quote unquote be patriotic is to give energy to their system. And, you know, a lot of people have criticized us for talking about the news and things, you know, as giving energy to the system. But if we don't bring up the fact that, you know, WW3 is part of the script, we're not going to be able to wish it away. People are still going to feel the effects of, you know, the weapons being used on humanity. So you can't just ignore it away. That doesn't work. And so if you have channels of information that are saying, why don't you just try to ignore it away, they're, they're not really giving you the real scenario of what's happening on the planet. And at the same time, if they also are telling you that the, the real power structure out there, a real power structure out there is going to talk to a group of actors and make decisions, that's not going to be a, a real truth either. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of that. Um, just ignore it and it'll go away or just ignore it and it's not happening. But it is. And I, I feel the way to do it is if, yes, we do go to the news and if there is someone listening who is ready to wake up and they do get a glimpse of this world and they can grab onto that and raise their vibration, then maybe them in particular can raise up and above a realm where things might not be so bad but there's so many out there who are still stuck in these cesspools of information I mean that's 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 why I mean we're tasked to go and cover the news and go there because there's people who are desperately searching they know that the constant anger is not right they know that um, just everything that's going on on TV the the back and forth between between the news the news outlets is not right there's something very very wrong and that's where we come in we come in and we go there and we point out what's wrong so that people can say 
oh, okay, I get it. I can do something different. I have other choices. And it, it's it's little by little, it's step by step, but this is what we do and we all work together and try to find a level of tolerance that, be, because, you know, we've all been there. I mean, I've, I can say I've been there thinking that things on the news were real, <laughs> but, you know, now I no longer support the news because I don't watch it. So that's one less person supporting the system. That's how we see it. Maybe we can go in and pull out one more person and one more person and one more person. And pretty soon the persons are no longer supporting the media. Then at that point, then it starts to vanish. Then it starts to be melted away. But it's, it's going to take some doing. Things here in the 3D are very, very slow and we have to walk through it. You just do. You, there only the, There's no way around it. There's no way over it. The only way is through it. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't want to be uh, unconsciously or consciously walking into helping the system. This is where <clears throat> try to rise above it. When they're going to create chaos, try to get out of the way of the chaos, holding your own frequency high. If you are forced to stay in the middle of an area that might get pretty tough, pretty chaotic, and you know might see all sorts of the, the horrible things that happen during war, keep your own vibration high, and you will have a lot more protection than if you are a typical person that's going to, again... Uh, ignore the spiritual side of life because again the religions have been given to us by the control system so that they, they've been distorted but we are still spiritual beings yes we are we are not slaves we are not slaves and anything that puts us into that mindset is is not really from the creator uh, again it's it's part of this control system so we we hope you guys um, got something from this as we head into challenging times. You see, just share out of love and compassion. Obviously, if, if your life is threatened, every individual has the right to uh, protect themselves and their loved ones. But again, it is better to uh, keep your frequency high and not be pulled into the drama because what they want more than anything is to pull you into their frequency it feeds them it absolutely does so remove the food source source bless and namaste namaste